And what we see is that there are six different length fasts that people can benefit from. And I'll go through them very quickly. Intermittent fasting, 13 to 15 hours. Great. I mean, that's what so many people are doing and what it's really great. I mean, the research is all, I mean, you don't have to go far to see amazing research there, Mm -hmm. but if you want to, you know, lose weight, you want to increase growth hormone, you want to increase testosterone. um, You want more ketones for better mental clarity. 13 to 15 hours is amazing. 17 hours, we start to to trigger something called autophagy. Mm -hmm. Autophagy is where your brilliant body looks within and it says, okay, no food's coming. So I better be a better version of myself. And so those cells start to repair. They throw, they kick out viruses, pathogens, they kick out metals, they kill cells that are not going to, that are going to turn into cancer cells. Like you at 17 hours of fasting, you go into this crazy repair phase. At 24 hours, your whole microbiome reboots and you get stem cells in your gut. So if you've been on birth control, antibiotics, mouth toxicity, even removing uh, breast implants, all of that destroys the microbiome. So throw some 24 hour fast at it. And now you're repairing, you're getting that repair. 36 hours, you're burning more. You start to really go after stubborn fat. 48 hours and you reset dopamine pathways in the brain. So you start to experience more joy. And then 72 hours, you reboot your whole immune system. Wow. I I do not know a supplement, a drug, anything that can accomplish that, like fasting. That's why I love it. Wow. How often would you recommend more extreme ones beyond right. the 13 to 15. Cause to me, that's where I fall. I sort of fall in the 12 to 15, even 16 is kind of hard to get to. Yeah. Um, I usually just like use 12 for sure. Yeah. Um, but then the longer ones, whoo. Ooh, we're going to get you to do a longer one. You're going to love it. So here's, here's the way it works is that if you look, I look at the cycle, like a circle on the first part of our cycle, like day one to day 10, Um, again, any of those fasts I talked about are great. Yeah. Ovulation period, you really, 15 hours is good, but we don't want to stimulate autophagy during ovulation because Mm -hmm. what can happen is a lot of those metals can get redistributed into the brain, into the body. Um, some people will have worse detox symptoms. So I like to keep the fast for women under 15 hours during ovulation. Got it. After ovulation, those four days afterwards, you can go into, if you want to throw a three-day water fast at it, great. And then the week before your period, no fasting, which is really hard no because, fasting. yeah. I mean, like eight hour, like, it doesn't matter. Just like, you don't, not above 13. You really want to yeah. keep it under 13. So if 13 is easy and you're like, I can just do it. It's super simple. Go for it. But what you don't want to do is raise cortisol. So for most people, 10, eight, 10 hours of fasting is going to keep cortisol where we want it. Okay. Okay. What about, um, what about where we slot workouts in with this cycle and, um, should you work out fasted? Uh, where does that fit in? You know, that's, this is, this is a controversial, uh, topic. Sure. I, I mean, I, I literally like it, it's something in my head. That's a controversy. Cause I'm like, fasting is a stressor workouts, a stressor. Like I'm trying to take care of my adrenals. Yeah. I'm trying to take care of more, my hormones, I'm trying to not slow metabolism down, I'm trying to not slow my thyroid <laughs> down. Like there's so many things that I'm thinking right. of and I'm like, wait, but there's so much benefits from it. And they talk about there being a lot of really good positives with like yeah. training in a fasted state. So, yeah. so where do you stand? Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I found is again, the front half day one, I'll just use the days because it's easiest. We start in the hormone world. We throw all these fancy terms around luteal and follicular. And Mm -hmm. I think for the the lay person, they're just like, I don't know what that means. So um, I like to make it a little more clear day one to day 10, you can run a marathon. You can take on a new CrossFit class. You can up your workout. You're going to do great. Uh, During ovulation, you've got testosterone. And so use testosterone to your muscle advantage. So yeah. So start upping your strength training during ovulation. If you want to do more cardio during those first 10 days, great. More strength training during ovulation. 
Then when you come out of ovulation, again, we have that weird little dip of yeah. hormones. You can go back into pushing your workouts and, and really you could do more HIIT training. You could do more cardio. You can kind of do whatever you want. And then the week before your cycle, stop pushing it. Yoga, Pilates, go for a hike. So we, when you look at, when you work with a trainer or you create your own workout plan, it's usually done on a weekly basis. Like, okay, yeah. I'll True. run on Monday. True. I'll strength train on Tuesday. Yeah. That's, exactly. For women, we should do it on a monthly basis. We shouldn't do it on a weekly basis. Cause if we map it to our hormones, like if you're trying to build muscle, flip and do it during ovulation, you've got testosterone to help you really power through that. Mm-hmm. But okay. we don't look at it that way as far as okay. I know. Okay. What about, um, where coffee fits in? I always have to ask about <laughs> coffee because I love coffee. Yeah, I did. I stopped coffee for two and a half months last summer when I lost my cycle, when my, like my lymph nodes were so swollen and I could feel them getting worse when I drank coffee, like yep. after a cup, I was like, Oh, I can feel it. So, I yeah. mean, like I was obviously <laughs> pretty high load of toxicity in my body, but yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but, um, sure. but I'm very curious about it. And then also maybe adding in a perspective on, um, you know, adding fat to your coffee yeah. and if, you know, kind of being in a fasting mimicking state is beneficial or not. And maybe the difference between weight loss and autophagy and cellular health and longevity. Okay. Let's start with coffee. And if I forget the rest, you'll have to, yeah, I'm, I, I ran back. <laughs> Obviously yeah. I want to know a lot of things. So no, just- I love it. It's such, it's, I think the, the whole world can benefit from fasting, not just women. Um, you know, we're talking about women, but obviously men rock fasting, totally. but what happens is we get into the path. Like you were saying, like, there's all these amazing things I can do for my health and we get in that path and then we get stuck and we just push the health tool out and go, ah, it didn't work for me but there's a rhythm to all of this. So with coffee, my first question is, were you doing clean coffee? Do you know if you were doing like chemical free, mold free coffee? I always make sure I drink like mold free, clean, organic, like, you know, I mean, I think an easy one to probably go to would be like a bulletproof coffee, Um, like brand bulletproof brand, because you know, it's advertised and supposed to be low low mold and toxicity. So yeah. So I've, of all the research I've done on coffee, I, it, the only time coffee doesn't do well for us is when it's toxic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not to name any, any names of, uh, coffee shops, but, uh, you know, the, like the mainstream ones are, are their chemicals in a cup. So every time you're drinking that, you're giving yourself a toxic dump. That kind of coffee, I do not advocate for. Clean coffee is a faster's like dream because when we take a good clean cup of coffee, there's, and we put like MCT oil in it, put some grass fed butter, if that's your jam, put in some, uh, I put like raw cream. I'll do like not organic raw cream. So you're getting probiotics and enzymes in it. It's a bit like a meal. And it won't spike your blood sugar. It typically doesn't pull you out of a fasted state. And what happens is it'll actually help you make ketones quicker. Mm. The coffee itself can actually put you into autophagy quicker. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot wrong with coffee for fasting. When you get those ketones, it's ketones go up into the brain and they kill hunger. So now you wake up and you're like, oh, I was going to go till noon today fasting, but it's nine o'clock and I'm hungry. What am I going to do? Have a cup of coffee with some MCT oil in it. You could put a little bit of raw cream in it. Not This is not coffee, mate. You're not putting like totally. a, a toxic creamer in there. And all of a sudden, wait, wait 20, 30 minutes and you'll see that your hunger goes away because it moves you into that fasted fat burning state much easier. Right. Right. And when you say raw, cause I've been, wa- I've been sort of watching a lot of different things, talking, people talking about, um, like unpasteurized raw cheese and milk and things like that, but it's very hard to get. It's illegal in States. It's like, right. <laughs> I mean, don't worry, you can buy cigarettes, but you can't buy, right. you know, raw milk. So right. is right. that what you mean? Yeah. Raw? Yeah. So raw. So what happens when we pasteurize milk is we kill all the good in it. 
So if you walk into your, let's say grocery store and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm going to go organic pasteurized. I heard that, it, you know, I don't want the antibiotics and the hormones that are in that milk. So I'll mm-hmm. go, go organic. Well, th- that's awesome because you're not getting the toxic load, but you're still putting a dead food into your cup of coffee. When you go raw, you've got the probiotics, you've got the enzymes in them. You put it in your, in your coffee, you're feeding your microbiome, you're breaking down any, you know, whatever food you're going to eat later that day. It now becomes a health food. How do we, why is it, it, why is it controversial? Well, maybe why a lot of things are controversial because people learn how good they are for you. And there's some conspiracy against muting us from our pure potential. I don't know. I'm a Amen. Person, so, you know, Amen. <laughs> I am high you know, fiving you on I that mean, one. You know, synthetic painkillers are fine, but psychedelics aren't yeah. right. Like there's right. just like a, right. you know, stuff from the ground. So it is, right. you know, I have a lot of opinions on that, but well, so how do you get it? Like, cause I mean, I'm in Indiana with my parents right now and I was like, Oh, I want to get some raw dairy. And, um, we were like Googling it and looking it up and you can't get it. I was at a farmer's market last weekend and I asked a farmer about raw dairy. And he's like, it's like illegal. You know, you have to pasteurize. It could have some bad bacteria from, I'm like, so basically the sourcing matters. And (laughs) so, you know, so how do you get it? Like, what if you're in a state that it's, I mean, cause almost all States, I think it's illegal. It, the the company yeah well I'm in California so it's we seem to be able to get it here yeah. <laughs> so at our it's farmers funny, market yeah at California is very oh, that was the one that we saw California has um, lo- looser rules on it so yeah can you ship it in can you, like yes. is, it, is yes. there a California company where you yes. can order some raw yeah it's called Raw mm-hmm. Farms. Oh. And uh, you can look them up online. If you have trouble finding them, just let me know and I'll send you the link. 